السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك First of all, I would like to thank uh, the uh, uh, to thank MCC for interesting me to lead this new twelve consecutive session series. Uh, well, uh, from starting today, September twentieth, until December the sixth, and these classes will be held once a week on Tuesday at one thirty to uh, two fifteen, inshallah. I would also like to thank all the virtual attendees and all those who will listen to the classes at their convenience. So uh, this series will, inshallah, focus on uh, the narrations on the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, everyone desiring to attain the hereafter, everyone who wants to be of the winners of the day after, everyone should not stick only to the book of Allah, to the Quran. He or she should also study the narrations of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is impossible to understand the Quran uh, without uh, going back to the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran and the Quran is the message. And the hadith is the explanation of this message. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to pray. Um, but he did not specify what to pray, how many rakahs each prayer should be. Uh, he did not specify what to read in the prayer. Is the prayer considered fard, obligatory, or is it a sunnah, an extra prayer? However, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarified all that. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarified all that. And he clarified everything that was mentioned in the Quran. So we should all study the narrations of the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the important information they contain and for the guidance they provide. And for the light they shed on the life of on the lives of Muslims. So, inshallah, in this new series, I I decided to elaborate on the collection of the forty hadith that were compiled uh, that were compiled by Imam Al Nawawi. So, what is this? Uh, What's the importance of these 40 hadith? Actually, this collection has been wildly studied in the in traditional Arabic circles of learning. And uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it continues to be one of the basic subjects that's taught in Islamic courses throughout the whole world today. And there are reasons why these specific uh, hadith are being studied. So this is uh, the, the, the this is primarily due to the uh, to the soundness of the collection as a whole, which means most of the narrations of these forty hadith have been. Uh, have been taken from uh, from the two Sahihs, which are Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. So we can say that from these 40 important hadith, many of the basic principles 
of aqida of creed of sharia are derived these are very important hadith uh, uh, these four hadith uh, that they have been compiled by imam al-nawawi so uh, imam al-nawawi uh, started his uh, his hadith started his book um, subhanallah he started his book uh, he started this collection with a hadith that emphasizes the importance of the niyyah the niyyah is the correct and the sound intention and for us we're going to start this series with a sincere intention today that we are doing this, that we are learning for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with this uh, series, with, this, uh, um, with these classes. So our intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to learn more, we want to gain more, but our intention is purely and sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only to understand the sunnah of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we aim to follow the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so that we will be resurrected on the day of judgment under the banner of our beloved Habib, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So let's inshallah start with the first hadith. And the way that I'm going to do it, if the hadith is short, then I will read the whole hadith in Arabic, and then we'll translate it and we'll have some comments on it. If the hadith is long, then I will uh, have it into sections, uh, small sh sections, Arabic, English, and uh, inshallah, we'll have some uh, uh, comments on the hadith. So, الحديث الأول عن أمير المؤمنين أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. So uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه said, I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying, deeds are but by intentions. And each person will have but which that which he intended. If a man's migration was for the sake of Allah, then his migration was for that for which he migrated. But if his migration was for to achieve some worldly aim or to marry a woman, then his migration was for what he migrated for. So the hadith starts with Deeds are by intentions. Normally deeds are either good or bad. Some deeds are accepted and others are rejected. Let me have uh, just a small note here saying that there is a saying that uh, deeds are either accepted or rejected except sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This uh, sending salawat is always accepted. 
So some deeds are either are accepted and other deeds are rejected. Some deeds are rewarded, other deeds are not. So deeds are good or bad according to the intentions. The intentions need to be pure. They need to be sincere. They need to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get fully rewarded. Normally, the deeds are classified, as I just mentioned, as good or bad. But when are they classified? When they are finished. Because um, let's take, for example, the case of someone who decided to do something evil. While doing it, his conscience prevented him from going on. He stopped. He changed his deed to a better one. So his deed moved from being bad to being good. So instead of being punished, he was rewarded. And this is why we say deeds are classified as good or bad when they are finished. And each person will have that which he intended. So the result will be either a reward or a punishment. One of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salah al qalbi bi salah al amal, wa salah al amal bi salah al niyya. The goodness, uh, the soundness of the heart is with the goodness of the action. And the goodness of the action is with the goodness of the intention. So the heart becomes a sound heart. And this is our aim for the day after. Ya Allah, to come with a sound heart to you. So how can we have a sound heart when we have sound actions? And when we, the, the, the actions are sound, when their intentions are sound, when their intentions are correct, when their intentions are pure, when they are pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ so whoever intended and had the intention that his migration is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to uh, obey Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then as per the Islamic law, this migration is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for his uh, messenger. So why, what is the reason for this hadith? They said that uh, one, one, well, once someone traveled from Mecca to Medina to not to, to, to follow the orders of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that wasn't his intention, but he went there from Mecca to Medina to marry a woman. And her name, the name of that woman was Umm Qais. So he wasn't uh, looking for the reward of uh, the migration. And that's why he was nicknamed as the Muhajiru Umm Qais, the one who migrated for Umm Qais. So now the hadith says, كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله. So when we have any action, when we have any deed, and we have the intention of our deeds is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
then this means that this this uh, deed is considered as a migration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever wanted just the, the worldly reward or uh, something worldly, so his migration is for that action. So again, the the important thing is the intention. And out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two things can be taken out of this hadith. And of course, this is just two remarks, but there are countless remarks that can be taken away from this hadith. So, the first one is that any routine work, any routine work, any daily work that you do becomes an act of worship if you start it with an intention. For example, every day you, you, you eat. Every day, we eat several times. Start, you, you, your food by by an intention that I am eating to get stronger, to get uh, the the power to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm preserving my body because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala ordered me to do so. So each routine, any routine work becomes an act of worship if it starts with an intention. The second point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Nisa, وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكْهُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ And whoever leaves his home as an immigrant to Allah and his messenger, and then death overtakes him, his reward has already become Incumbent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward him, even though he, the, 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 the action is not completed. So this is this is what Ibn Abbas also narrated when he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ So Ibn Abbas reported that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, God records the good deeds and the evil deeds. فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا If someone... Uh, the, uh, intends to do a good deed but did not do it then God records this deed for him as a complete deed as a good deed so first, فَإِنْ هَمَّ بِعَمَلِهَا كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ عَشْرَ حَسَنَاتٍ إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةِ ضِعْفٍ إِلَى أَضْعَافٍ كَثِيرًا So if uh, he, he uh, intended to do a good deed, God records this for him as 10 to 700 and many more times as much. So this is the report. You do something, then Allah will highly reward you for that. وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا And if someone intends to do an evil deed and does not do it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record it for him. So as a complete good deed. He intended something evil, he did not do it. 
Allah will reward him for that. فَإِنْ هُوَ هَمَّ بِعَمَلِهَا كَتَبَهَ اللَّهُ لَهُ سَيَّئَةً وَاحِدَةً But if he intends to do it and he does it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records it for him as one evil deed. Imagine, look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thinks of uh, doing something good. He was not able to do it. Allah will give him the reward. If he does it, then Allah will, will multiply the reward. But if he plans something bad, did not do it, Allah will reward him. If he does it, he will give it, he will write it, he will record it, just one evil deed. Now, if we ask ourselves, what's migration? Do we have to migrate these days for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If the answer is, if someone is in a country, safe, sound, can practice his religion freely, then he's not supposed to, to, to migrate. But if not, if he is not able to do that, then he is to migrate. So this is the general meaning of migration. But what is the spiritual meaning of migration? Migration is to migrate from bad deeds, is to abandon disobedience. And this is the real migration nowadays. There should be complete and sincere repentance of sins. So leaving bad deeds is a migration from the state of doing bad deeds to the state of doing good deeds. From the state of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the state of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There should be complete, there should be sincere repentance to accompany that. And in fact, repentance has, has many conditions. First one is to feel sorry that you sinned, even if it is a small sin. Do not say, okay, yeah, this is only a small sin. Uh, no. The awliya, the friends of Allah say, do not belittle the sin. Rather, think of whom you have disobeyed. Another point, another condition for repentance is that you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Do at least 300 times every day istighfar. Say astaghfirullah, asking Allah for forgiveness. And then take a decision not to do the same thing, sin again. But you will say, okay, shaitan will do his best to make a sin as long as we are alive, how can we do that? How can we stop? And this is why out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, Allah has opened the doors of repentance until the time of death. Inna Allah yaqbalu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yughirghir. Allah accepts the repentance of his slave as long as the death rattle has not yet reached his throat. So hijrah will continue until the day of resurrection based on the saying, لا تنقطع الهجرة حتى تنقطع التوبة ولا تنقطع التوبة حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها. Immigration will not cease until repentance ceases. And repentance will not cease until the sun rises from its place of set. So the Muslim is in need of migration at all times. When the practice of his deen is made difficult for him, then he has to migrate. And a person needs always to leave the uh, sins which is the biggest migration. Moving on to the second hadith, Sayyidina um, 
ابن عمر بن الخ... عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه ساب بينا نحن جلوس بينا نحن عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu said one day when we were sitting with uh, Allah's messenger a man with very white clothing and very black hair came up to us no mark of travel was visible on him and none of us recognized him so he was a stranger no one knew him Sitting down beside the Prophet and leaning his knees against the knees of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and placing his hands on the thighs of, uh, on his thighs, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbir me an al-Islam. Tell me, Muhammad, about Islam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطاع إليه سبيلا. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the uh, definition of Islam and he said Islam means that you should testify that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is God's messenger. Uh, that you should perform or observe the prayer, pay the zakah, fast during the month of Ramadan, and make the pilgrimage to the house if you have the means to, to go. So the man said, you have spoken the truth. يسأله ويصدقه So we were surprised at his questioning him, questioning Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then declaring that he spoke the truth. He's asking, and then he is saying, okay, you said the truth. قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان Then he asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell to tell him about faith. Al-Iman. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره. So, Iman is to believe in God, to believe in his angels, his books, his messengers. And the last day, and that you should also believe in the in the decreeing, both of good and evil. قال صدقت. And he also said, "You have spoken the truth." So, uh, keeping people more surprised. قال فأخبرني عن الإحسان. قال الإحسان أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراه So the, the second question was Okay, tell me about إحسان And إحسان is the perfection in doing good, good things إحسان to do the best How do you do the best? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. You should worship God as though you saw him. For he sees you. Though you do not see him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching us. He is recording our deeds for us. 
and it is said اليوم عمل بلا حساب وغدا حساب بلا عمل today you do you work you do you do you you, you do your all the deeds but there is no reckoning but tomorrow which is the day of judgment there is reckoning and there is no work so everyone will see the result of his deeds that he has done in this dunya فمن وجد خيرا فليحمد الله so whoever finds good on the day of judgment should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he provided him to do the good things that he guided him to do the good things ومن وجد غير ذلك فلا يلومن إلا نفسه and whoever finds something not pleasing whoever finds himself a loser then he should blame himself only Allah sent the messengers Allah gave us my uh, intellect so we can think will this will this deed be considered as a good deed or as a bad deed will this deed please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will it be pleasing shaitan will this these words that someone is going to say be considered good for him or bad for him will it be uh, uh, how, how how would someone think of everything that's how it should be sayyidna abu bakr siddiq used to have a, a small pebble in in his uh, under his tongue If he wants to say something, it will uh, uh, hinder him. So for a second, he will think, well, whatever I'm going to say be considered a good deed or a bad deed. Who is this? Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. The one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, about whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we will, get, we will reward everyone who does good for us except for Abu Bakr. Allah will reward him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overseeing everything that we do. He's hearing everything that we say. So whenever we want to do something, we have to ask ourselves, whom, whom are we going to please? Allah or shaitan? If we are pleasing Allah, then we do it without thinking. But if that will be to please shaitan, we have to stop. If you are in a, in a community, someone does something good to you, then you obviously are going to deal very well with that person. But what are you going to do if someone does mistreated you? The good thing is not to do good things with good people, no. The good thing is to know how to deal with those who mistreat you. So, the, the, uh, the person continued and asked another question. So he said, now tell me about the hour. فأخبرني عن الساعة. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل. The one who is asked about the hour is no better informed than the one who is asking. I don't have enough information to tell you. I don't have more information than what you have. So when is the hour? No one knows. But we have to get prepared for the hour. We have to get prepared for the day of judgment. And the day of judgment starts as soon as someone dies. Because when that person is placed in, in the grave, then the, he will know whether he will be in, in paradise or in hellfire.
قال فأخبرني عن أماراتها. So when he he did not answer him about the hour, about the day of judgment, he said, okay, now tell me about its signs. قال أن تلد الأمة ربها. So سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a maid servant should beget her mistress. وأن ترى الحفاة العراة العالة رعاء الشائي يتطاولون في البنيان and that you should see barefooted naked poor men uh, poor men and shepherds exalting themselves in buildings so أن تلد الأمة ربتها the son or the daughters would treat his mom or her mom very badly. The same way that a master would treat, uh, a bad master would treat his servant. No respect, cursing, humiliating. And unfortunately, some of the children those days do these things. So, the signs are there. And the word the word shepherd is mentioned to indicate how poor these people are. So these poor people are just building high buildings. Skylines, and we have so many of these high buildings now in the world. These are signs of the day after. Then he left. So Sayyidina Umar, he said, I waited for a long time thinking. Then the Prophet said to me, Ya Umar, atadri mani sa'il? Oh, Umar, do you know who the questioner was? Do you know who, who was that person who came and asked those questions? I replied, Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. God and his messenger know best. So what was the answer? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّهُ جِبْرِيلُ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ He was Jibreel, Gabriel, who came to you to teach you your religion. So in this hadith, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the pillars of Islam. And actually, the next hadith is about the pillars of Islam. And I'm going to say the next hadith now because I want to combine both hadith uh, and uh, comment on both of them. When uh, Sayyidina uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar anhu said, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان. So this is what we what we just mentioned uh, that uh, the uh, the pillars of Islam are five. There is no God but God, and that Muhammad is his messenger, his servant and his messenger, uh, the, the observance of the prayer, the payment of zakah, pilgrimage, and the fasting during Ramadan. So, um, so in, uh, in these two hadith, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the pillars of Islam. Explained the pillars of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. So we find that there are different levels 
different stages to indicate where someone is in terms of his relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is he in the Islam level? Is he still at the beginning? Or is he in the Iman level, a higher uh, level? Or is he at the Ihsan level, at the perfection level? Sometimes a person feels that he is uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's performing more salah. He is focusing on his prayers. Uh, he's doing very good deeds. So that person should take advantage of this, of this time. Because there are, there are times that a person can, is, is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes that person might feel that, okay, I'm away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dunya is engaging, is, is uh, taking me away from the real worship of Allah, a real time of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith show that people are not on the same, are not the same in their deen. We have Muslim, we have Mu'min, we have Muhsin. And these are the levels, uh, and these levels are not the same. So at the beginning, when the hadith started, he said, So one day, while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, and the comp companions uh, used to have to to sit with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu to learn from him, to seek guidance from him. So, subhanAllah, when we hear about the, the people sitting with the Messenger of Allah, this urges us to, to attend the uh, gatherings of dhikr, the gatherings where Allah is mentioned, where the hadith is explained, where the Quran is, is being talked about. So these, these are the, the main points of the three hadith which all uh, lead us to one point to get ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we stop for a second and we ask ourselves, are we ready? If death knocks our door today, are we ready? Have we done en enough deeds to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we forgiven people? Have we followed the, the uh, uh, advice of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said to Abu Huraira, Ya Abu Huraira, alayka bi husni al-khuluq. You have to have good manners. And Abu Huraira, of course Abu Huraira knows what good manners are, but he wanted to teach us. So he asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, wa ma husnu al-khuluq? So he said, أن تعفو عمن ظلمك وتعطي من حرمك وتصل من قطعك. So you would uh, forgive those who mistreat you. And you would give those who prevent you, who deprive you. And you would reunite and you, were, you would connect your, the relationships of those who cut you. Do you think this is easy? Words are easy, but practicing is not as easy. So we end with a dua that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best that would lead, would lead us to to be of those of the winners 
in the day uh, on the day of judgment so that he would be pleased with us and we would be of those people whom he said about radiyallahu anhum wa an Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah because of the highly rewards that he will prepare for them inshallah we will meet next week with more hadith and more explanation inshallah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh